Right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a comparison video between the Nikon 105 f1.4 versus the Sigma Boca Master, which is a 105 f1.4 art lens. Now, later in this video, we're going to go over sample images that you can download and play with and pixel peep to your heart's content. But before we do that, let's get into the basic specs of these lenses, starting with the costs. The Nikon, 2200 bucks. The Sigma, $1,600. That is a major difference. One is $2,200, one $1,600. Which one is going to be better? Well, at the end of this video, we are going to have a definitive winner on which one is better. I also want to point out that this is actually my own version of the 105-14 from Nikon. I bought this one as soon as it came out. This has been lent to us by Sigma, so keep that in mind. I own this lens, which means, as of now, it's winning. By the end, I don't know if it's still going to be winning. So as you can see, the Sigma is much chodier than the Nikon. I like to call this one the Peter North, where the Nikon is more like the Oliver North. It weighs in at 2.17 pounds, where the Sigma is 3.62 pounds, which means if you don't have muscles like me, it's going to be much more difficult to carry these around. Honestly, they're heavier, and because the Sigma is heavier, it has a collar built in. It has a tripod collar. Now, it does have an Arca Swiss plate that's already built in, which is pretty cool, because if you have an Arca-compatible tripod, you just drop this right in there, and you don't need to worry about losing a plate or not having a plate because it's always attached. Now, for me, I hate having a lens collar. I'm not going to use this on a tripod for the most part, and I'm not going to put it on a monopod. I want to hand hold it, so this does come off the back of this lens. Now, on the Nikon side, you have a 82 millimeter filter thread on the Sigma. It's a 105 millimeter filter thread. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and get UV filters, I'm going to tell you not to get UV filters. I don't think there's a piece of glass that I would put in front of this piece of glass that would make it any better. It might actually hurt the quality of the lens if you put a UV filter that isn't very good on the end of these lenses. I don't think you should put a UV filter on almost any lens. That's my personal preference, but I know some people want to use them for protection. So just keep in mind, if you're going to buy a filter, you get the best filter that you can so that you don't hurt the quality of your images. Now, speaking of filters, if you use these for video and you shoot outside, you're going to want to get a variable ND filter so that you can cut down on the amount of light coming in, which allows you to shoot at a wider aperture. Now, with that being said, they're going to be super expensive. It's going to be more expensive to find a 105 ND variable filter than it is going to find an 82 millimeter, but they're both going to be pretty expensive. So definitely keep that in the back of your mind. Now, there's two really important tests I'm going to do right now. One, the sniff test, and two, the wind tunnel test. Let's sniff the Sigma. Mmm. French toast with cinnamon sugar. Nikon. Tears. Tears of fears. Because it's scared of this Boca Master that it's right next to. But let's, let's give it a wind tunnel test. I'm going to blow from this way, Stephen. Stephen, let's, let's do that. So... Let me just tell you about the wind tunnel test real quick. If we were talking about which one blocks the most wind, the Sigma would win. But in this case, Nikon wins because it was behind the Sigma, so check mark to the Nikon on that bad boy. Now, if you are shooting video, you want to keep in mind that if you're going to handhold this, you will not have VR in either of these lenses. 
but because these lenses are so sharp and some of the sharpest lenses out there, VR might affect the sharpness that you would get in these lenses. So it would also make it a lot larger. So there's no VR in this thing. Not a deal breaker because you are buying this because of the 1.4 and you want as much sharpness as you can get out of your images. Now, if you're gonna do manual focusing, you will notice that the Nikon is much easier to turn the dial. The focus is much easier and smoother. Now on the Sigma side, you really need to tighten your fingers in order to turn the ring. I've noticed that in a lot of the Sigma art lenses that you have to actually clamp down a little harder to make that turn when you're focusing. The Nikons seem to move much smoother. Now let's talk about the setup I used to test out both of these lenses side by side. My friend Shannon was in town. He's on tour currently with Marilyn Manson. He has an awesome beard that he's been growing for three years. He has a great looking face because he's a good looking guy. I sat him in front of the window because we used daylight. We had a hair light on the back of his head. And I sat him down on a stool and I sat on a stool so that we didn't move. I wanted him to stay in the same exact place. Now keep in mind, he is a real person. I like photographing people that are real because you can get a better representation of how portraits are going to look. We were going to try out the real doll, but that just stood there and sat there and did this. We also placed in the background one of our palm trees that has LED lights on it that we use for the Photo News Fix set. Now this way, that would help us create some bokeh balls in the background and you can analyze those for yourself. Whereas the Nikon seem to have a little bit more of a football shape in some of the images, the Sigma may have kept its roundness and may be the reason why they call it the Boca Master. But of course, you can download all of the sample images over on the website, the link is on the screen. I am gonna give you the raw files to play with so that you can pixel peep them to your heart's content. I had Shannon sitting on the chair, we're shooting at F, 1.4, trying to keep as many of the same settings as possible. Now, when I went back and looked at my Nikon images shot at f1.4, I somehow missed the focus, even though I was locked off on the tripod. So I had to use one of the sample images that I used as a test shot, but it's still at 1.4. The only difference is, is that it's at 1 1 60th of a second versus the Sigma, which was at 1 100th of a second. Now, the first thing that I noticed with these two images is that the Nikon seemed like it was longer than the Sigma. The Sigma seemed just a smidge wider, which makes me wonder, is the Nikon a 105 or is the Sigma a 105? If the Nikon's a 105, does that mean that the Sigma's maybe a 100 millimeter? I'm not really sure, but you can see the difference because we are locked off on a tripod. Nothing moved. Shannon stayed in the same place. I stayed in the same place. The only thing that changed is me taking off the Nikon lens and putting on the Sigma lens. Now, the Sigma lens is larger. It is chodier, it is an inch longer, an inch or so longer, is there a difference there? Or is one truly not a 105? Now let's zoom in one to one on these images in Lightroom and you can see that the Sigma is sharper at one to one. And when you wanna go really far in at two to one, you can see that the image again with the Sigma is still sharper. Now I do have a question. Is the depth of field different between the Nikon and the Sigma because the Nikon feels like you are shooting tighter than the Sigma? Could that affect the depth of field and the perceived sharpness between these two lenses? I'm really not sure, but that's a question that is in the back of my mind. Now, some of you may be saying, why are you using the Nikon D5 and not a D850? Well, I chose to use the D5 because that's what I put this lens on all the time. And because I own this, I wanna know if it's better or not than the Sigma. So I'm putting it into the workflow that I'm the most comfortable with on the camera that I use the most. Now, I wanted to get off the tripod to do something handheld because that's how I like to shoot when I'm doing my portrait. So Shannon again stayed in the same exact spot and this time I went ahead and got as close as I could to Shannon to still get things in focus. So I was in single focus mode listening for the beep and got as close as I could with both the Nikon and the Sigma. Now they both allow you to get to within just about a little bit more than three feet. So that is pretty similar with both of these. But again, 
The Nikon has that feeling that it's a little longer and the Sigma is a little wider, so keep that in mind. Now for this image, I had the same exact settings and applied the same exact color correction. Now one of the only differences that may have changed in this is that the sun may have peeked out from behind the cloud when I was using the Nikon lens, so that may be why the Nikon has a perception of a, being a little brighter. So like all of my portraits, I focused in on the eye and at 1.4, it's not always easy to get focus tack sharp on the eye. Now in this case, when you zoom in one to one, again, you can see that the Sigma looks sharper more so than the Nikon. Now keep in mind, I've done a lot of shooting with the Nikon 105 1.4 for my six degrees of photography personal project. Every time I'm doing a six degree shoot, I try to get a portrait at 105, at 1.4 where I fill the frame. And I've noticed time and time again, I've had a difficult time nailing focus on the eye where I want it at 1.4. Even at 2.2 or 2.5, I find myself having trouble getting perfect focus on the eye, and I think I may have the reason and the solution for that, but we're gonna talk about that at the end of this video. Let me cut in here real quick and ask you, how do you keep track of your gear and do you have insurance to protect it in case something happens? Well, if you're not sure, go download my app called My Gear Vault. It's free for iOS and Android, and it's going to help you answer those two questions. Now let's get back to the video. I wanted to do more tests because what if I was doing something wrong with the Nikon when shooting at 1.4 that was human error? So this time I photographed Dan, who's one of our editors, and I wanted to go for a vertical portrait, but I wanted the head to be the same exact size with the Sigma as well as the Nikon. So I took the Sigma shot and then matched the Nikon shot to it as best as I could. We have the same exact settings for both of these images. I'm hand holding, we're at 1.4, the same shutter speed, and when we go in one to one on these images, you can see that the Nikon fares very well. I nailed the eye and it looks nice and sharp, but when you put it side by side against the Sigma, the Sigma just looks sharper and better. If I didn't have the Sigma to compare to the Nikon in this situation or in most situations, you wouldn't know the difference. A lot of people say that this is one of the sharpest lenses they've ever tested or seen. Now, I told you I had issues at 1.4 shooting many of my portraits during my Six Degrees project. And I think one of the reasons for that is I fill the frame as much as possible, and when you do that, your depth of field gets even narrower when you fill the frame. As you take a step back, you may be able to get more in focus, meaning I could nail the focus on the eye, which is what I did in this situation when I matched the framing of the Sigma with the Nikon. But at the end of the day, the Sigma is still sharper one to one. And when you go in two to one, look at the catch light of the window. It is sharper on the Sigma side. That is a big deal. No matter what we've done in our tests, the Sigma seems sharper. So no matter what we did, it just kept winning. Now I also wanted to do the brick wall test. So I shot the Nikon and the Sigma both at 1.4 all the way up to F16. And in this case, you can see that there's some major vignetting on the Nikon at 1.4, which is expected, but it's much brighter in the center of the image. Now on the Sigma side, the vignetting at 1.4 never seems to stop. And that also brings up the point that I didn't mention earlier is that the Nikon seems to be a brighter lens in general, about a third of a stop brighter. Could it be that there's a difference in the T-stops? Well, I'm not sure, but what I am sure of is that the Nikon is a little brighter than the Sigma. Keep that in mind if you need more low light capability. Another thing you have to take into consideration is if you travel a lot, will this lens fit in your bags with your workflow versus this lens? Because I know that I already struggle to fit the 105 in my bag with all of the lenses that I already wanna take versus if I had to put this in my bag. But with that being said, I can't justify having the Nikon in the bag if I know that the Sigma 
is sharper. It doesn't justify it being smaller and lighter if it's not as good as the Sigma. Keep in mind, this is my personal opinion based on the tests that I did. You can download the RAW files and you can test them out for yourself. And if you do have both of these lenses, be sure to share your images with the world to see if you got the same findings as me. Don't forget, I own this. This is my personal copy. So to find out that the Sigma is sharper, I hit more at f1.4 and all around just seems better in terms of image quality, leaves me questioning whether I should sell the Nikon and deal with the size of the Sigma to get the portraits that I've been having trouble getting at 1.4 with this Nikon lens. I'm sure you didn't expect that outcome and I honestly didn't expect to find that the Sigma was sharper, but again, in my tests and in my opinion, the Sigma just seems to be a better option and throw in the fact that it's $600 less. So that's all I gotta say, guys. I said a lot. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, give it thumbs up. I do wanna remind you that if you'd like to pick up these lenses or any other pieces of gear, there are links down to Adorama in the description. So go ahead and use those. And I wanna thank you very much for watching Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.